Welcome to the official NBA Top Shot podcast. Here, we'll keep you up to date on all things NBA Top Shot, from breaking down the latest moments to navigating the newest features. We're here to help you have fun and own the greatest plays in NBA history. Let's start the show. Hello, hello. What's up, everyone? How are you? This is Roz Gold on What I Hear, and welcome to this NBA Top Shot Twitter Spaces with Magic Johnson. He'll be arriving to join us here shortly. Um, I'll be your host here. So first of all, let's show some love. Throw up some throw up some hearts or some hellos. Let's give me some waves. I need some friendliness in the audience. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, that's love. What up, Jacob? <laughs> Magic! <laughs> what, what's happening? We finally got through. <laughs> <laughs> yes oh yes we are so excited all right y'all show him that love again give a heart giveaway for magic johnson because we've been in here waiting for you oh, oh hey we, we, patiently we've been trying <laughs> <laughs> sorry hey look down magic look down magic look at all the love everybody's I, I giving you look at all those hearts and yes hugs. i see that thank you thank you thank you appreciate it and what a game last night too Come on now. What what did you think of game one? I, I'm in San Francisco as well. Mm -hmm. I saw you on the court. Yep. I didn't have the chance to say hi, but what did you make of that game? Well, let me first say that you were looking so beautiful in that colorful dress you had on and those beautiful oh. shoes. You you always are fly. So I, I want everybody to know she did it again uh, last <laughs> night. Your outfit was spectacular and, and you know fashion. So I thought the game. Thank you, man. You're welcome. <laughs> it, just, just think about this, Roz. What Steph was able to do in that first quarter, right? The the place was buzzing, going crazy. I mean, 21 points, incredible. Uh, they were up double digits. You, you're thinking, okay, oh uh oh, it's gonna be one of them nights. You know, Steph gonna go crazy. Uh, the uh, the Warriors are gonna, uh, you know, have a big half, and then. All of a sudden in that second quarter, the Celtics just really uh, clamped down on, defensively on the Warriors and then got their offense going. Because remember, they were, they were um, you know, struggling for a minute, especially with Tatum uh, struggling in, in, in most of the game and all the game, but especially in that first uh, quarter and into the second. But they finally got it going in the second quarter, took the lead at halftime, but what I saw and what I said, man, I see a lot of the Warrior players just tucking on their shorts and bending over because I thought the layoff may have some effect on them. And um, third quarter, they, again, take a double-digit lead. You're thinking going into the fourth quarter, you say, okay, um, this might be over, you know. And the Celtics, it was about first five minutes of beautiful basketball well, both teams couldn't miss. Remember, it was just back and forth. Great shot, big shot after big shot on both sides. And then the Celtics defense just really uh, stopped them for the, the last really six minutes of the game, last five minutes of the game, and uh, got a victory. And I think it meant more to them than the Warriors because when you got a young team that's never been there before, for them to win game one on the road, um, mm -hmm. Uh, means a lot and meant a lot for their confidence and believing in, in themselves as well as making sure that now they believe that they can win this series. So you're going to see Boston come with a different mindset. Uh, if they had a loss game one, you know, they would have been down and everything. But I think they needed this boost of confidence and, and, and the way they want it too. They can do things that no other team can do against the Warriors. That's Their small team is really effective and good in terms of the Celtics, and they can switch everything on, on, on their defensive end. And that really bothered the Warriors in the last six minutes. Absolutely, and it, I'm sure it gives them a lot of confidence. The Celtics, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they finally bust through the Eastern Conference Finals and get to the Finals. It's their first time. But on the other side, like the Warriors get back Sixth time in eight years. Now, Magic, I know you went to the finals nine times. You won five chips within the NBA. Just how significant, how hard is it to even achieve what the Warriors have, have done right now? It's, it's difficult. And you have to remember that, you know, where you think about 
there's only what four or five guys left off of that team, you know, uh, Steph, Clay, and Draymond, and then you got Looney, and then uh, I think Equidala is the only other guy. But all the other guys are new for the Warriors. So for them to get back to the finals once again, especially after the last two years of Clay's devastating injury um, and then Steph injury last season, Draymond has been injured in and out the last two years as well. So for all three of them to be healthy and then going back to the finals once again, having a chance to win another championship, uh, is truly amazing, and it, it is a dynasty. And um, I think that, you know, if they win this one, man, they go down as one of the greatest teams, along with my Showtime Lakers and Larry Bird, Celtics, Michael Jordan's uh, Bulls, you know, uh, the Spurs with Tim Duncan and all them. They they become one of those teams that we are talk about. So with that, would – would you be willing to call the Warriors one of those greatest teams of all times without them coming through with this championship? Or do they need this to really solidify that level of legacy in your opinion? I think they need it to get in that level because you have to remember Tim Duncan then won five, right? So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we won five, you know, and so Jordan has six. So to be in that conference, Kobe, uh, total five. So you got to at least win four to be up <laughs> in that conversation. Uh, right. Three, three still gets you in the top 10 of all time. No question about it. But uh, I think right. uh, uh, this will really just uh, put not only the team, but also Steve Kerr, the coach. He becomes one of the greatest coaches of all time with this victory. Wow. Big words here from uh, Magic Johnson, five-time NBA champion, Hall of Famer, amongst many, many accolades here with us in this NBA Top Shot conversation. Magic, you know, these conversations, sometimes they make you go, they make you sigh, but I feel like with you on this spaces and, you know, you kind of talking with us about greatest teams of all time, um, I have the opportunity to ask the greatest point guard of all time how you reflect on where Stephen Curry is um, in his career as he steps into his sixth NBA finals mm -hmm. and all that he's already achieved. Well, I think he's already there as one of the greatest that's ever played. We know he's the greatest shooter that's ever lived and um, he doesn't need anything more to happen. Anything else that happens is just really uh, cherry on the top. Right. And uh, uh, even his first, even a first, uh, NBA Finals MVP, one thing he has not gotten yet. I, I, he hasn't won that yet. But listen, when you can be a change agent, that's what I call him. He's changed the way the game is played. Very few guys get to 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 be in that category, right? If let me just go back, Kareem changed the way the game had had, had been played. You think about uh, LeBron and Michael and Kobe. Uh, Allen Iverson, you know, those guys who have uh, changed the way the game is played, changed uh, the way people think about the game. Uh, myself and Larry changed the NBA. So so he's already in that category of all those guys who somehow have changed uh, the way people uh, have to think about defending a team or the way uh, – uh, young people now uh, and old who go out and now they want to be Steph Curry on the on the playground. You know, um, it's it's amazing. His resume is uh, already great. Now, if he wins a final MVP, yeah, that'll be awesome. You know, it'd be it'd be really wonderful when you start talking about the Mount Rushmore and all of that. But I think he's already there because of the championships and also that he changed the way basketball is being played today. Absolutely. You and Stephen Curry change agents of the game. I'm here with Magic Johnson, three-time finals MVP, three times MVP, 12-time All-Star. You know him. Um, we're having a lovely NBA Top Shot conversation here. For those that just joined us, I'm Roz Gold on Wood A. What's up, y'all? And, you know, we talked a little bit about the NBA Finals game one just now, but I want to move into – 
what's the most exciting aspect um, you know, of this conversation with the Top Shot family listening right now? Y'all, Magic Johnson is newly <laughs> minted on the blockchain. And we want to make sure to uh, announce Magic Johnson's anthology set. Um, it will be the first ever anthology set. Um, and, and the point of this, guys, is to celebrate the biggest moments in a legend's career in a very highly coveted and rare set. So make sure you're paying attention. Four of the total five moments of Magic Johnson's anthology set are going to drop this Tuesday, June 7th. Tuesday, June 7th. Make sure you catch that drop. And the fifth and the iconic Junior Junior Skyhook is coming Ooh. later this year. Ooh. All right. We're going to get into it. We're going to get it. I'm going to ask you about it now. Now, guys, every pack is going to have one moment and one moment only. And it's either going to be a Magic Johnson rare or a Magic Johnson legendary. So we're talking rare, rare. And the highest mint count period will be 999 with the lowest being 32 mint count and that'll be the sky hook coming later this year mm -hmm. um magic i want to dive in with you just off of the like kind of just your your mindset as a hooper but also as a businessman how did you get into nfts and, and decide that nfts blockchain was something you wanted to get into well i think signing with top shot you know when you think about my iconic moments they all happen in the nba and I wanted, I'm, I'm, I'm always about being the first, right? And so for me to be the first one to sign and uh, they have, the NBA has all my uh, memorable moments and shots. And um, so I, 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 I love that the fact that the fans are get to have a little bit of magic. <laughs> 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 so and cool. that, um, I'm doing it with the best company and, uh, you know, I like to run with the best as well. And so I'm excited. I, I really am. And every time I go somewhere, even last night, people are really excited about the moments will be available for them to purchase. And, uh, and, uh, so this is exciting, exciting time and the NFT, this is the way of the world now. And so, uh, for me to uh, enter into the space. I've been recruited by every NFT company, but mm -hmm. I, I wanted to just wait and make sure I went with the right one. Top Shot is the right one. NBA is the right one. And so this is exciting for me as well. Yeah, no, I absolutely feel that. It, it, like you said, it, it feels like, um, you know, all of the alliances and allegiances with, with groups that you trust, one, and yep. then that have been... Yep feet in the ground here and in the trenches for decades and decades. And then that's in the NBA and all of your plays. So how do these digital collectibles of your most legendary plays compared to like trading cards? Like now I can own it. And like, it's actually something mine that I can prove I own, you know, on the blockchain. Yeah. I think you, you just said it. Um, uh, trading card was, um, uh everything to a kid growing up now um, then right and you think about even myself you know i wanted my favorite players trading cards and i was all about that and we would trade with each other well this collectible uh basically is the same but it's 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 what's going on right now today you know and this is really exciting because when you think about um you can have it and keep it trade it or sell it i mean it's 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 amazing and um this is what's happening this is the modern modern day trading card in a sense and mm -hmm. so uh, um, i think it's wonderful and it got me excited about that you know uh, all those collectibles right all those shots all those remarkable moments that i shared on the basketball court with my teammates and and i played against some of the the greatest players that's ever played. Now people get to own some of those moments. You can not only own one, you can get to own a few of them. <laughs> so, right, right. So, well so that's why it's special. I think that, and again, you don't have to, uh, it's out there in the clouds, it's, it's ready for you. You don't have to worry about now, I gotta uh, maintain it, I gotta put it in some, I gotta put it in the 
bought. I gotta put it, you know. I gotta right. keep it safe. It's gonna, it's gonna. If somebody tear it up or or pick it up and scratch it, now it's not worth the, you know, yeah. what you thought it would be worth. You don't have to worry about all those things, you know. All you need to do is purchase it, and you got it forever. <laughs> you get it. That exactly. It, it really cleans up kind of the yeah. collectible industry in many yeah. ways. Some of the yeah. areas that you might get tripped over. I feel like the technology of blockchain and NFTs, right. just and, and transparency of like who owns it and how it's moved, like really right. just streamlines the process. You you nailed that. I, I got one more for you about NFTs, and it made me think like for you as a legendary player, like what does it mean to you? you know, legacy wise and exposure wise, you know, for that, you know, of course there's the fans that were alive watching these plays live as they were happening, but also now, you know, through this Top Shot uh, anthology pack, you know, you might also be touching younger fans of today. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a great deal because those same fans that you're talking about have never seen me play, but they can go back and look and say, oh, I not only, I didn't see him play, but I get to own some of his moments, right? I get to own uh, some of his most memorable shots, and and um, or I I looked him up on whether that's whatever on NBA TV or YouTube or whatever device they use to say, "Wow, look at that pass! Look at that shot! Look at that moment!" Oh, now I get to own that pass or that moment, and uh, whether I'm five years old all the way up to a hundred years old. You know, it doesn't matter. And I think it brings that newer fan to the NBA, to uh, my legacy lives on and other men and women legacy uh, lives on as well. It's a way for uh, the players to also, you know, make a living too. You know, there's a lot of players who need this as well. So it's, it's really great. Uh, it's great for everybody. I think it's great for the players. It's great for the fans. Uh, it's great for the league. Uh, so everybody wins uh, in this situation, especially the popularity of the game. You know, and it's not just here in America. It's around the world. So people around the world going to own magic moments. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I really love that. <laughs> right, right, right. And that has a nice ring to it. Um, and it's a great segue, actually, these magic moments. Uh, y'all, Magic, would you be down to just, you know, maybe break down a few of the uh, plays in this anthology drop, if I could get your insights so, and memories on some of them? Would, would you mind yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, that's easy. <laughs> I, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And guys, uh, thank you again to everybody who's here at this uh, NBA Top Shot Twitter Spaces with Magic Johnson. I'm about to uh, ask Magic about some of his memories around some of these legendary, there's five moments total in this drop. Four of those moments are dropping this Tuesday, June 7th. Don't miss it. If you want to watch the plays and moments along with us while we're talking about it right now, go to magic.nbatopshot.com right now and you can watch the plays with us while we talk about it. Again, that's magic.nba. I'm sorry, magic.nbatopshot.com. All right, so let's let there's I'm, there's five total. There's two that I want to break down here in the in the um, respect of time. And the first one I'm gonna start with is a legendary around the back dime to uh, Byron Scott, March 19, 1985. Magic, take us to that play where you are up in transition and throw that around the back dime to, to Byron Scott. Well, you know, um, one of the Phoenix Sun players tried to go for the steal. I'm coming down on a fast break, and I had it in my right hand. He thought he had the steal, but I had to trick him right quick and go behind my back real fast and then <laughs> throw the no-look left hand pass to Byron Scott, and he dunked it. Oh, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, that's amazing. You don't okay. you don't get the moments today. You don't get those moments today like that. No, so first of all, Magic, how did you have such good timing on your passes? Like, is that something you can explain to us? Um, not it's hard to explain because what happened, Raj, you know, everything I do was just at the moment, right? You don't Think about what you're going to do until you do it, because 
the defense makes you react, right? So he went for the steal, and I knew Byron was already there. I had already peeped him, you know, after I got the outlet pass. I knew where he was, and but I just had to shake and bake until I got down there. And when he tried to go for the steal, I had to embarrass him. You know, I had to go on and <laughs> him. And, and then Byron finished it off. I love when a man can finish off the great pass with a nice dunk. The place went crazy. And you know me, that gets me hype, boy, when I do a pass like that. Everybody out there, you better go get it. You better go get it. Yeah, that's definitely a magic moment. We need it. We need it. Yo, show, show magic some love. Throw up some love out there in the audience. Um, yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. But- Another question about this play and then just your boldness in general, like how did you balance uh, the boldness versus like not trying to, you know, make a mistake or turn turn it over, you know, because some of these plays you you are in traffic with three defenders. Yeah, but it's what I do. You know, when you it's what you do, it's what I do best and what I'm known for, you know, and so, you know, I can do that with my eyes closed, you know, it's like. It's it's my feel for the game is what made me magic, you know, Um, understanding that not only I'm going to go behind my back, but I know how to get it there, too, at the same time. Right. And and Byron knew that uh, it was coming. He just didn't know how it was coming, but he knew it was coming. (laughs) So that lane, he said, I'd better. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, everybody on the Lakers knew just get out on that lane. I'm going to get it to you. I just, it, they just didn't know how I was going to throw it. I didn't know how I was going to throw it, but I was going to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Magic, you were, you were one of those players. If you was, if you was Magic's teammate, you just w- be on the court with your hands up, keep your hands That's up right. on your face. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because I hit my first training camp. I hit two or three guys in the head with passes because they were looking. <laughs> So I told him, I said, let me tell you something. You're going to get hit some more. So you better start looking because you don't know. Just because you don't think you're open, to, I know you're open, but I'm going to deliver it probably in a way you've never seen before. And sure enough, those guys start putting their hands up. And, I, hey, our fast break was fantastic. Even there, Byron, see, you got to put that ball right in his chest where he can receive it and catch it. See, that was a perfect pass, and uh, then he can just go up and dunk it. And so a lot of guys don't make perfect passes. This was a perfect pass right in his wheelhouse. Bam. He he didn't have to break stride or nothing. Right. You caught him right in stride. For those who want to watch along with us, magic.nbatopshot.com. You can watch the plays on June 7th. You can collect them Uh, this this You need to have this one. You need to have this one. That's that's. That's Is awesome, this your right favorite there. Assist magic? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I had some more, but that one, because he finished it with that dunk and it was on the road, and even the Phoenix Sun fans had to stand up and give a standing ovation. It was so sweet. It's iconic. And also, I mean, it's in it's in between traffic of literally three defenders. Y'all, uh, this is the only legendary assist in Magic's anthology set. There'll be 85 minted. Um, so keep your eye on that one. It's going to be a hard one to get magic. I want to move on to, to one more of the moments in the five total in your anthology set Four are coming out June 7th. There's one that we've got to wait till later in the year for, and it is the, uh, most rare. It is the 32 mint count junior, junior sky hook of the 1987 <laughs> finals, seven seconds left in game four. And this play put the Lakers up for good. Can, can you take me through what you remember about the junior, junior sky hook? Well, Larry Bird had just hit a three pointer to put the Celtic up. We were up to, he hit that three pointer. I'm sorry. He hit the three pointer to put them up two. We were up one. Kareem gets fouled and he makes, he makes one misses one. The ball goes out of bounds on uh Kevin McHale. So we caught a timeout with seven seconds and the play was supposed to go to Kareem in the post. But I was like, nah, I can't give it to him because they overplayed Kareem, you know, us up. What? I think it was 105, 106, 105. And so when I saw we did a back uh, screen on Kevin for James Worthy, but they switched. And when I saw that I had Kevin McHale on me, I said, oh, I'm going in the middle. And 
Sure enough, I shoot the sky hook over three guys. So Robert Parrish came off of Kareem. Kevin McHale was already on me, and Larry Bird tried to stump me. And so I said, it, does, it doesn't matter. I'm going to shoot this hook, and it's over. And so what a beautiful, beautiful moment because it went all net, and it put us up one, and we end up winning that game on that sky hook. And um, I think that that's when people said, you know what, okay, the pa- the torch has been passed from Larry to me now. <laughs> okay. So it was my league then, you know, because that year also, not only did I win the MVP of that series, I was the MVP of the league that year too. So I won both MVPs and um, we won the championship. That's why this hook is so uh, special because it's like a game winner against the Celtics in Boston Garden, you know. And so you can't get no rarer moment than that, right? <laughs> you, 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 you don't beat Boston in Boston, in, in Boston Garden at that time. It's just uh, – so for us to do that on my sky hook, wow, what a, what a moment. What a, a moment in time. And everybody, everywhere I go to speak, I speak at – corporations probably three or four times a week, right? At different uh, retreats around this country. Uh, so many Fortune 500 companies have me come in and talk. Guess what the number one question is and, and what everybody say, what were you thinking about when you shot that sky hook against the Celtics? Or they say, <laughs> you know, you, man, I can't, I couldn't stand you. I hated you because you hit that sky hook against Larry and my Celtics. Everywhere I go, that's what everybody talks about. Wow. Do you feel that this was legacy defining? Oh, for sure. For sure. It was uh, that it was a moment where you said, you know what? This was the moment that Magic Johnson really um, cemented his legacy. Really, um, it went from now, not only could I pass and do all the other things I was doing, but now they understood I was a force on the offensive end as well and that I could take over games and win games at the end of games. And that's what really started that, that, that conversation because, you know, to go in on the road, see a lot of guys can play at home, but can you actually do it on the road? Right. Can you do it uh, with the most pressure on you? In a, in a game-winning shot, can you deliver during that moment, during that time, against the best in the game? And I was able to do that. So that's why that moment is so special. And so – and that's when Larry Bird – also, this moment is on there too. That's when Larry Bird said, oh, he's the greatest I've ever seen. You know, in the interview after the game, that's when he said that after that shot. Wow to get that respect from one of your greatest rivals. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Just uh, one more detail on this iconic, um, meaningful, powerful moment here, the Junior Junior Sky Hook coming later this year. You you, you glazed on it, but um, as you had the ball, you look, you got Kevin McHale on you. Robert Parrish is is hanging around the paint. You kind of glazed on it. And yeah, Larry Bird came in the last second. What were the options you weighed in that moment when you just had seven seconds left? And just to give some context, Lakers had just come down from, come back from being down 16 points at the half. That's right. That's right. You know, what was, what were the options you weighed in that moment? Well, the first option was actually dumping it into Kareem. But when I first got the ball, that's what I was looking for. But Parrish was sort of overplaying them and Kevin McHale, had really dropped back off of me a little bit. So it was going to be a difficult pass, right? So once I saw that the lane was there, I said, okay, I'm going to do a little stutter step. If you look at the video, it'll show that I, I I did a little stutter step on Kevin to make freeze him a little bit. And then that's when I got the one step. And when I get the one step, when he was on my hip, oh, it's over. Once I get you on my hip, it's over. It's over. Let's let's go let's go home. Let's go home. I already knew. All right. All I had to do is get the shot up because it's time to go home. And sure enough, 
swung across. Now, when Ke uh, when Robert Paris came over, Kareem was open, but I was already in my rhythm. No way I'm going to mess that up. And so, and then if I had a miss, he would have got the offensive rebound, but I wasn't planning on missing. It was just a beautiful, and it went all net. There was no question. No question. <laughs> that, that it went in. You know? All draws, baby. All draws. Oh, man. man. Yeah. Yo, I, there's only going to be 32, but whoever can get their hands on that moment, uh, you can. You heard it from the man himself. It's, it's legendary, iconic, and uh, has quite a lot of circumstance to it. Um, interestingly enough, the Celtics and and and, and Roz, the Boston Garden is not open anymore. I mean, it's 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 you know they tore it down. They they uh, built this new arena, so that's what makes it special too, because it's in the legendary Boston Garden. Wow. Oh man, Red Arbeck still alive. He had to see that. Oh man, he was mad after that. Huh? Hook shot went in. So you had all the great figures in the house, all the great Celtics. You know, this was a great moment for the Laker organization and the NBA and fans all over the world. Again, that's a shot that everybody talks about right there. That shot. Matter of fact, when I was on ABC last night, what did they lead in with? And on ESPN, what did they lead in with? That shot right there. Junior, Junior, Sky Hook. <laughs> Magic, I could do moments with you all day. I, I wish we could because I've never heard a better narration of a moment than with Magic. And if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying in the audience because Magic is. <laughs> I, I wish I could, you, I could see your face, but hearing your voice is, is giving me goosebumps. Uh, and y'all, one forget. day we one, one day we'll sit down live and we'll go through them like this. Okay, bet it's a deal. It's a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Count me in. I'm gonna bring popcorn. We should. We should do that. That would be a lot of fun. You got I, I it. I already know it would be fascinating. And and interestingly enough, you know that the Celtics uh, and the Lakers legendary back and forth battles in the finals. Celtics making it back this year uh, yep. to the finals. Um, and and uh, we've talked enough about the NBA finals. I just want to give a little love to a place that we spent a lot of time in Magic. The, the women, the WNBA, the, the W yeah. side, yeah. and just yeah. real quick, take a look over there because um, you as a, as a part owner of the team of the LA Sparks, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm the color commentator for the yep. LA Sparks. We have our feet deeply rooted on the W side. And I just saw you the other day giving big love to their new LA native point guard, jo uh, Jordan Canada. Um, I, I just want to ask, I think I'll keep it specific to the, to your team. You know, what are you most excited about with the Sparks this season? I, I think we got great balance and it, we knew that it was going to take us a while to, to get yes. going. When you think about NECA and, and really coming together, you know, we, I think we had what nine new faces, I believe might be uh, more, but um, nine new women coming to the team and trying to, you know, really mesh and, and come together as a unit. And, um, but I'm really excited because this team, I think, I think in another week or so, really get to understand how to play with each other. Um, we're, you know, how to play defense together, how to read situations together. You know, when you don't know each other, you don't know how to react, right? We, we, we saw, you know, last night how the Celtics knew how to react. You know, right. and, and, you know they they knew if if uh, Tatum had the ball up top to spread out, and they knew uh, how to read and 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 feed off of him and his drives or Brown driving. We don't we don't have that yet. We don't have a sense of knowing each other quite yet uh, with the Sparks, but it's it's coming. It's getting better. And we played the majority of our games on the road. I think we've only had, what, two or three home games, yeah. but most of them have been on the road. So I think for us, I think we're going to have a great season. And if you haven't been to a WNBA game, you should go, fans, because it is so much fun. It is such a great time. You know, I know here in Los Angeles, we're so excited when you go to a Sparks game. We got the DJ. We got the old school, new school. We be yeah. singing. We be dancing. So we be partying. <laughs> I mean, it's a good time. And I have to admit, now, 
I'm a big Laker fan. I go to every Laker game, and it's great. But I have more fun at the Sparks game. Now, I love the Lakers, and I go. But you talking about fun-wise, I have more fun at a Sparks game because I'm up there singing. He play all the new school and old school. I'm up there dancing, cheering. And so it's a, really a good time. And so uh, take in a WNBA game if you're out there, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And these women can really, really play. Not I'm not talking about just the Sparks. I'm talking about the whole league. You come and you're going you're gonna to say, wow. It's a it, it's a different um, WNBA today than it was even ten years ago, even fifteen years ago, even probably five years ago. They are th these ladies can do things that uh, uh, men can't even do. You know, it's 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 exciting. It's exciting, and they really play hard and they play good uh, basketball. Well said, Magic. Ooh, you got me over here just clapping and standing up, and I feel that exa exact same energy and um for the top shot family listening here i know a lot of us have gotten it we're excited about the debut of the wnba on top shot season two is here um so just make sure you're continuing to collect and do the challenges of your favorite wnba players on wnba top shot and of course catch your ladies from the sparks on there shout out to NECA. <laughs> right NECA, the president of the wnba players association Facts. And Sparks on a two-game winning streak. Okay, we are so biased. Right. That's here. right. We're, that's we're, right. We are such biased Sparks people right that's now. That's right. That, <laughs> hey, that's how it goes. That's how it is. I but want yeah, my ladies to win. Any WNBA Top Shot collectors in here, let me see a heart. Throw up a heart. I'd love to see y'all. <laughs> uh, throw up a heart. We love it. All right. And while we're talking to the fans, we are at the end of our conversation here with the legend, the Hall of Famer, Magic Johnson. We're going to close it out with a few questions from our fans in the NBA Top Shot Discord. And if you're not a member, make sure you go in and, and join the Top Shot Discord so that you can be a part of these uh, opportunities to send questions in to some of our top um, family members like Magic Johnson here. So we've got a few, Magic. I'm going to run them by you. One that I like, there's a, there's a number, and for the interest of time, I'm going to get to some of my favorite ones. This is my favorite question. From the Discord, someone asked, Magic, if you had the opportunity to play in today's game, how do you think your style of play would have changed compared to how it unfolded in the 80s? Would you have turned yourself into a three-point shooter, a small ball five when needed, something else? That's a question. Uh, that's a great That's a great question. I think that it probably would have been a, a small ball five. I could do that. But my game wouldn't have changed. I still would have been the guy who set up my teammates uh, of course, you would have to shoot more three pointers. That's okay. Um, I could do that. But my, but leading a team and and uh, uh, setting my teammates up and uh, probably in today's game I would have been a four or five. But you got the point fours now. You you see that basically that's what Tatum and Brown are right. They bring it up, set it up, you know. And so uh, Draymond Green, that's what he does for the Golden State Warriors. So uh, that would have been, you know, good for me. I, you know, take the ball, set up my teammates, or the lane is more open now. You have to remember that. So I probably would have scored more in today's game because once I got past my man, I'm going all the way because in today's game, they don't have a lot of shot blockers like they did in my, in my day. So uh, that's what I would say. Okay. Thank you, Magic. We're going to move on to another question. This one is from, that fly the guy <laughs> from the NBA <laughs> Top Shot Discord. He said, Magic, uh, what do you think about your NBA Top Shot collection if you were to build one? What sort of players and moments would you want in your collection? Would you take all Lakers, all point guards? What would you get? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would take all winners. So Michael Ooh. Jordan, Larry Bird, um, <laughs> LeBron. Kobe, all the dudes like that who have played the game the way uh, I love them to play the game, but they won. And so, and, and they had a special skill set that you haven't seen. And I think that's what makes mine special is that I'm different from most guys. That's what made Jordan special. He's, you know, could do what he could do. LeBron special. He could do what he could do. Kobe, 
on and on and on. So Kareem, you know, that sky hook, you don't see that no more. So uh, that's what I would do. Take the guys who had a special skill set that you really don't see uh, anymore, or he's the only one to have them. But also, he turned that into championships. Mm-hmm. And Steph Curry, like, you know, how he can shoot. So, you know, and he's won three NBA championships. That's special. I like special guys like that. I want to give a shout out to a number of the people who sent in questions from the Discord. I see Bull, Timber Cats, Mr. T Time, Mike G, Lurker. We see you guys, Pucklum. We can't get to them all, but we've got two more. I'm going to throw at Magic and then we're going to thank him for his time here. Um, top three greatest rivals, but who was the hardest to guard? That's a question from the Discord. Um, well, the top three, of course, I would say for me, Number one with the Celtics. That was our biggest rival. Um, and it would always be Larry and I. You know, that's that, – that, nothing – you won't see that probably ever again. You know, um, uh, the Celtics, Lakers really hate each other. And so – and then I would say from there would be Michael and his Bulls and then probably Isaiah and his Pistons because we played them in back-to-back -back finals. Absolutely. Thank you, Magic. And, and we'll end on this one. Uh, we'll take it to the present right now. Somebody asked, who is your favorite point guard to watch in this era? In this era? Wow. <laughs> Yikes. They're all so different because it's not one, you know, um, because I love uh, Steph. I love Ja. I think Morant, he's so entertaining. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I love watching him just do his thing. Uh, Damon Lillard. I mean, it's so I can basically you, you keep going, you know, you it, it's I love watching great point guard play young man out of it the, with the Hawks. Um, now I, I drew a oh, blank. Trey, Trey Young, Trey, Trey Young, you know, I, what? you know, and then and then the man who just puts it on a string. Um, when you think about Kyrie, he Aww. just, man. What about the young gun, Mellow Ball, the young gun? Yeah, I love, I love, LaMelo plays much like myself in terms of, you know, getting everybody involved with the fancy, with the passes, fancy passes. And, and uh, his brother Alonzo, uh, you know, I, I know very well. Of course, I drafted him with the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the Lakers. But I think that, uh, I just like point guards who know how to not only score, but also how to get their teammates uh, the ball in the right situations and make their teammates better. All right, Magic. We know you know a lot about making others better, a lot about winning, a lot about Magic. This has been absolutely captivating. This is my favorite Twitter space I've ever been a part of. Thank, uh, thank you, Magic. you. <laughs> uh, thank you. And keep on representing so many incredible women and women of color in this incredible world of sports and entertainment. Uh, you make us all proud. Uh, you're classy, you're smart, uh, beautiful, and uh, you, you, you do your job so, so well. And um, there's little girls everywhere saying, hey, now I know I can be on TV because of you and what you've been able to do. So God bless you keep you safe and healthy okay oh my god <laughs> thank you so much you're welcome thank you god, god bless you god bless you too thank you magic and um thank you to everyone who came here thank you to our top shot family and um it was really nice to hang out with you guys today uh it, this was magical <laughs> pun intended or not intended um and don't forget to catch the anthology drop the first ever anthology set of five magic johnson moments four of them they drop tuesday june 7th so make sure you catch that this tuesday june 7th and then that fifth junior junior sky hook coming later this year love y'all top shot family bye thanks for listening have a question you want answered Simply email mailbag at nbatopshot.com. Please rate and review the show to help us grow this community. Every week, we'll be giving away packs for your feedback. See you next time.